Here's a few examples of uh, concrete problems with sequences. So one would be just find the first like five terms of this sequence. Pretty straightforward in terms of just understanding the concept of a sequence. Um, let me put one in that's got a pattern that's very common. It's minus one to a power and let's say four over n plus two. So we're just going to plug in the numbers one, two, three, four, five into the formula here. A sub one is when I take minus one to the two, that's two powers of minus one, that's going to be plus. So I'm just going to get four over one plus two is three, and then I'm done. A sub two. Now here's interesting, two plus one is three, that's odd. Minus one to an odd power is minus, that's switched. Now I'm going to get four over, I plug in two for n, two plus two is four. Oh, that simplifies, that's minus one. A sub three, now three plus one is even, that's back to plus, and I get four over three plus two is five. A four. 4 plus 1 is odd, it's back to minus. So you can see what you get from this kind of pattern. Either a minus 1 to the n or a minus 1 to the n plus 1 is an alternating sign sequence. Here 4 plus 2 is 6, and so that simplifies a little bit. And a5 is going to be back to plus 4 and then over 7, that doesn't simplify. So this kind of pattern of a minus 1 to the n or a minus 1 to the n plus 1 shows up all the time. Alternating sign sequences are uh, really quite common. Let me show you one example of why that would be true. Find, oh, um, yeah, find the first five terms of this recursive sequence. Suppose there isn't a formula you can just plug in, but a sub n plus one is equal to minus three halves times a sub n. And I'm going to need to tell you what a sub 1 is. a sub 1, let's say, is uh, 4. So a sub 1 is 4 is given. a sub 2, now to find a sub 2, do I plug in n equals 2? No, I plug in n equals 1. And this is a little different from how the book often writes things. I'll compare it to how the book writes things at the end a sub 2 would be when n equals 1, then this would match. And that, so n equals 1 here, and so I get minus 3 halves times 4, I'll put a little dot there, which is equal to minus 6. a3, to get that, I need this to match. I need n plus 1 to match 3, and so I'm going to put in n equals 2. That's minus 3 halves a sub 2, which is minus three halves of minus six, which is going to be nine plus. Notice the sign is switching each time because I'm multiplying by a negative each time. So it's very easy with a recursive sequence to produce something that alternates sign. And so that a closed form for it, like the analogous to this guy, would need maybe a minus one to a power. Okay. So a four is going to be minus three halves a3. Each time the next thing in the sequence is just minus 3 halves the previous. That's minus, uh oh, minus 3 halves times 9. And that is, finally we get a, a fraction, we get minus 27 halves. And a5 is going to be minus 3 halves times a4 which is going to be plus 81 fourths. Notice that these numbers are getting bigger in size each time because I'm multiplying by them by something whose absolute value is bigger than 1. And they're flipping in sign as well, but the size of the number is getting bigger. And it's growing in a geometric progression. This is, in fact, a geometric sequence because the ratio of the next term to the previous term is always this constant. Oops minus three halves. Let me undo that. And it's the, an example of an alternating sign geometric sequence. So these guys are basically going to grow exponentially. In fact, 
we can um, get a, uh, a closed formula. We're soon going to be able to get a closed formula for what these are for a sub n. Now, let me mention, we'll wait for that. The way the book would write this, I wanted to expose you to both versions. The way the book writes things, usually for an occursive sequence, is a sub n in terms of a sub n minus 1. It's just a matter of nomenclature. The n here, notice when we actually calculated this, n doesn't appear in the final answers. It's just a temporary variable that we match to these numbers to figure out what the pattern is. It's just a way to encapsulate that pattern in, into a general formula. This a relation says exactly the same thing as this guy, even though it looks a little bit different. Okay, and let's look, do a partial sum example. Let's find the first few partial sums, uh, and those are called s sub one, s sub two, etc., of the sequence a sub n equals, let's say, um, let's do an interesting one, 3 over 4 to the n. Alrighty, so s sub 1 is just a sub 1, and that's 3 fourths. s sub 2 is a sub 1 plus a sub 2, that's 3 fourths plus 3 sixteenths. Hmm, what is that? If we simplify that, that's 12 plus 3, that's 15 sixteenths. S sub 3 is a1 plus a2 plus a3. We're taking a running total of all the numbers that we see in this sequence. And that, so that's going to be uh, 15 sixteenths, that's a1 plus a2, plus 3 64ths. Hmm. Well, what is that? Well, if I multiply this by f uh, 4 over 4, I'm going to get 60 plus 3 is 63 64ths. Think about if you're seeing a pattern there as I do the next one. That's a1 plus dot 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 a4. And that's going to be the running total up till then plus, ooh, let's see, 3 over, it turns out to be 256, it's okay if you do that on the calculator, and if you multiply 4 times 63, turns out you get 252 plus another 3 is 255 over 256. That's very interesting. So S sub n, which is the sum k equals 1 to n of A sub n, or A sub k, or in other words, the sum of 3 over 4 to the k, so that I let that run between 1 and n. I wonder if there's a closed formula for that. Well, we're going to have various ways of figuring that out. But let me just observe, these guys are all less than 1, but they're getting very, very, very close to 1. So a good thing to do is to look at, is to express them as 1 minus something. What do they lack compared to 1? And then it's much easier to see the pattern. Huh. These are all just 1 minus 1 over, and if these numbers are exactly these powers of 4 that, we, that were appearing here. So it seems like that that looks like it's going to have a general formula of 1 minus 1 over 4 to the well, whatever n was. If the sum is up to 4, it looked like it was. we were getting that 4 to the 4th, so it looks like 4 to the n. And that's going to be an instance of our general formula for the sum of a geometric sequence. Because once again, I love them, I did a geometric sequence here. And then this is an example of the sum of that, which is, goes by the name of a geometric series. Right now, we just have to be okay with the terminology and the technology of just adding them up explicitly, and then very soon we're going to get to these kinds of cool formulas. It's also going to help us with our, invest our big investment problem as well.